of this last one. Odds against winning are the number of ways you can lose versus the number of ways you can win. When you're looking at a roulette wheel, out of the 38 slots, only 18 of them are odd. So that 38 represents the 18 ways you can win and the 20 ways you can lose. So your probability of winning is 18 out of 38, but your odds against winning are 20 to 18. And somebody suggested that you could put that in kind of lowest terms if you wanted to. Yeah, that'd be equivalent to 10 to 9. You're just essentially dividing both sides by 2. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to do something like that with problem number 43. Now, part C says... <clears throat> Um, when you bet that an outcome is an odd number, the payoff odds are one to one. How much profit do you make if you bet $18 and win? So that refers to our payout odds. And our payout odds reflect the amount bet versus the net profit. So if our payout odds are one to one, let's multiply that by 18. Just kind of like here, we divided both sides by 2. Here, I'm going to multiply both sides by 18. So that means if I bet $18, how much do I win? $18. But that's the um, that's what they pay you out. What should they pay you out? Well, there's a part D here. And again, you're seeing a little bit of the author's sense of humor. Let me zoom in on part D. It says... How much profit would you make on the $18 bet if you could somehow convince the casino to change its payoff odds so that they are the same as the actual odds against winning? So the actual odds against winning were 20 to 18. So if those were the payoff odds and you bet $18, how much should you win? 20. So that extra two bucks, that's helping the casino stay afloat. That's their profit. All right. Is because on average, they're not paying you off as much as they should if they wanted a completely fair game. And they don't. I mean, they're, they're in it to make money. No sin against that. But um, <clears throat> so they should, you should get 20 bucks back if you are getting true odds. Now, it says, don't actually try to convince, or it says, recommendation, don't actually try to convince any casino of this. Their sense of humor is remarkably absent when it comes to things of this sort. So, probably good advice. No one's actually going to be really, really happy to say, nah, you know, you should pay me more money. I don't think that it's going to go over too well. Are we good with problem 42 uh, here? All right. Let's. All right. So, going back to how I split the 38 into 18 plus 20. 18 was the number of ways that you could win. So, if there was 18 ways you can win, the rest have to be ways that you can lose, because this has to total up to 38. Yep. Uh. Let's go down to Kentucky Derby for our last one. And let me move this out of the way. When the horse Justify won the 114th, 144th Kentucky Derby, a $2 bet on Justify win resulted in a winning ticket worth $7.80. How much net profit was made from a $2 win bet on Justify? So let's take a look at that. So part A, two dollar bet, won seven dollars and eighty cents. That's how much I gave you back. What's your net profit on that bet? Five eighty. Good. So the net is 780 minus 2 or $5.80.
that's your net profit. Now we need that. Because the next problem says, what were the payoff odds against a justify win? Now payout odds, that's the amount bet versus the net profit. So what's that payout odds gonna be for this $2 winning ticket on justify? And it's gonna be something like this. Five point eight zero to two. Or I don't think we need the dollar signs here, it's just five point eight zero to two. That's that's the payout odds. Okay. Based on preliminary wagering before the race, betters collectively believed that Justify had a .19 3.5 probability of winning. So the probability of winning, according to the betters, was 0.1935. Now we're going to do in this one, in a minute, what I did with the last one. But I need to help you out a little bit first. Right here, this is our tenths hundredths, thousandths, what's this five? What digits that in? What place is it in? Ten thousandths. So what I can do is I can write that as 1,935 divided by 10,000. And I just like writing it like that because it's going to be a little easier to split things up. Now how am I going to split things up? Well, I'm going to do it the same way I did here. Once I know the probability in the numerator, the number of ways you can win in the numerator, I can split up the denominator into the number of ways you can win and the number of ways you're going to lose. So let's work with that probability here. 1,935, I want to split that up. Let's start out with this. How many ways are there that I can win? 1,935. Now the rest of this has to total up, or has to help this total up to 10,000. So how would I figure this out? Yep, you're going to subtract this amount from the 10,000. So 8,065. Beautiful. And now let's review what this is. This is the number of ways you can win. This is the number of ways you can lose. And what I want to do is I want to come up with the odds against winning, at least as determined by the betters. So, uh, let's see, odds against winning. Someone want to give those to me? What would the odds against winning be? Okay, but put it in the form of odds against winning. 8065 colon. Yeah, so it has to be the number of ways you can lose versus the number of ways you can win. So it has to be in that order. <clears throat> Now there's one more part of this. But this is this is the hard part, I think. But I think we did a good job of explaining problem 42, and I hope that helps you out with 43 here. So are we good on this one before I move on? Last number, part D here. It says... Um, if the payoff odds were the actual odds found in part C, what would be the worth of a $2 win ticket after the justify win? So how much would a $2 ticket be worth if they actually gave you uh, the odds based on part C? So let's, let's think about that. And what I would suggest here, 
And I'm sorry, I'm uh, I'm forgetting your name up front. Is it? No. Yeah, Dave. That's, that's what I thought. All right. So what what Dave said earlier about dividing both sides by two or multiplying this, that's actually what we're going to use. If you divide everything by two, you get this. If you multiply everything by 18, you get this. If I want to figure out what happens to $2, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to divide both sides of this by 1935. Now, why 1935? What's that going to give me on the right-hand side if I divide both sides by 1935? It gives me a 1. So I can find out what happens to a $1 bet. On the left-hand side, 8,065 divided by 1935. It's going to be a little bit over 4. It's going to be 4.17. So that's what happens when you bet $1. What should I do to figure out what happens when I bet $2? Multiply by 2. So the $2 is going to net you $8.34. So look at the gap. That's what they should pay you. And this is what they do pay you. So kind of a big gap, right? Like I said, it pays to know the games that you're playing. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, for the last half year or so, I can't stop hearing ads from FanDuel, uh, DraftKings, and all these other, you know, MGM Casino and uh, tons of other ones that, that want me to say, Want me to spend some money with their sports book? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Sorry. You know, it's it's not a good bet. You know, there's all kinds of great offers out there, but that's because eventually, if you gamble long enough, you're gonna lose. All right. It's just that simple. The odds are stacked against you. So be smart if you are gonna gamble. Okay, that's it for today. Uh have a great week and See ya. I can't hear you. Yeah, a week from today, I think, sounds about right. Yeah. So, yeah, a week from today is going to be your first.